this is our final section on DC Lesson 8 series parallel circuits and a little practical demonstration of the skills around that. So series parallel circuits, we're going to uh, be looking at the currents and the voltages around those. So we're going to determine the resistance of a series parallel circuit and do that uh, using calculation and measurement. We're going to measure the voltage drops around a circuit and see if they match up and we're going to measure the currents around various parts of the circuit and again compare whether they match up with what we calculate. <coughs> so let me get my uh, pen all set ready to go and don't forget to do your risk assessment we're going to keep everything well under 50 volts so ELV uh, there is the possibility of uh, things getting a bit hot, so beware of burns and trips and falls, etc. Keep our leads well up on the benches. So here's our basic circuit. And uh, as you can see, we've got 100 ohms, so R1 is 100 ohms. And in series with that, we have a little parallel network. So we've got a little parallel arrangement in here between 100k and 10k and then in series with that we've got another 1k ohms and we've got a DC power supply running at 20 volts so that's our basic circuit from a circuit diagram perspective so I've done a couple of uh, quick calcs around the circuit and uh, so I've worked out the parallel network calc. You can see here um, our parallel network of 10K and 100K is about 9.09. .09. So 9,090 ohms. We add that to our 100K, our 990 and our 1,000. <coughs> and it gives us 10,190 ohms is the R total. So keep that uh, number in your head. We'll be needing it a little bit later on. So here's the physical circuit. And again, just a quick explanation. DC power supply, you can see here it's already running at 20 volts. I've set this multimeter up here onto milliamps, so it's measuring current. The meter over here, I've set to volts DC and obviously it's measuring our voltages in our pitches. We have a switch, just a ordinary slider switch here, and we have our 100 ohm resistor, our 100K, and a 10K, all in series with our 1K. So this is our physical outworking of the circuit. Um, I've used a electronics kit from um, JCAR Electronics called Click and Connect. So it uses press button clip gadgets to connect all the components together. So if you ever wanted to play with this, it's a, it's a great tool. So next, what I've done is then calculated all the data I could around the circuit as exists. So I simply took the R total that uh, we'd worked out earlier off the diagram. We know what our voltage is, therefore I was able to calculate I total, and there's our I total. So VT divided by RT giving us uh, 1.963 milliamps. So notice the currents are very low because our resistances are relatively high even though we're running at 20 volts. And what's the current in uh, I1? Well, it's the same as I total, so it's 100 and sorry, 1.963 milliamps. I2, we had to calculate that, and that was V2 divided by R2, so we have 17.84 divided by 100k tells me that I can calculate there's 0.178 milliamps. And I did a similar thing for I3, because they're going to be the same, aren't they? So again, 
I3 is exactly the same count because they're parallel with each other. So those two circuits there, they're in parallel, so not too hard to work out the current there. Then I4, it's normal part of the circuit. So again, I4 is I total at 1.963 milliamps. Then into the voltages, voltage across V1 at uh, 0 0.196 volts. Because it's 10k, just move the decimal point one place to the uh, left, of course. Volts 2, 17.84, and volts 2 and 3 are the same because they're in parallel, 17.84, and finally our voltage across the resistor 4 is 1.96. You can see where I've done the calcs here for each of those things. So there are our calculated values. You don't have to remember them because I'll bring them back and show you them as we go. So the next thing I've done is had a look at the voltage supply. So the supply voltage is 20 volts. You can see here we've got the 20 volts on the power supply, but I've also got the voltmeter also telling us that we've got 20 volts. And you can see where the voltmeter is connected, one across the supply. And the other end so we're measuring the resistance or the voltage you should say across the entire network so we're measuring our voltage across here our volts total coming in at the 20 volts at the moment the switch is off so we have zero current So next we're going to measure the voltages around the circuit and all I've done is simply taken a photograph as you can see. Again, I'll just turn on the screen pen and I'm measuring the voltage around R1 and it tells me I've got 0.2 of a volt. So you can see that on the display, 0.2 of a volt. Then I simply move the multimeter across to measure the voltage across V2 and it's also the voltage across V3 and it tells me I've got 17.88 so because that's not only V2 it's also V3 then obviously it makes sense we also have 17.88 because these two resistors here are in parallel with each other and then finally we measure the voltage across the R4 resistance and we get 2.046, so it's 2.046 on the meter. So I've just spelt those over here, so we've measured 0.2, 17.88, these two are the same, and then the voltage across the resistor 4 is 2.046. So you can see we've measured our voltages. The next is to look at the supply current, you can see here that I've simply now closed the circuit and our ammeter is operating. You see the voltmeter is now disconnected. We're not using the voltmeter at all. And we're just measuring the current and the current's measuring at 1.998 or very, very, very close to two milliamps. And you can see I took the link out of this spot here and I've inserted the ammeter. So I have my ammeter inserted in series in here. So our next step is to measure some currents around the circuit. So we're measuring I1, which is the same as I total, by the way, but we're just measuring it in a slightly different uh, place. So you can see here I've taken the link out and I'm measuring the current and it's 1.985. So we've measured the current here to get that one. Then our second spot, I'm just measuring the current to this first resistor here. So it's only the R2 current. I've put a little um, 
alligator clip lead in to continue to supply the R3, so the R3 down here, and the R2. So we're measuring the current only through the R2, and it's 0 0.180. Then I reverse the process down on this slide here, and you can see I've moved the link back now over here, and I'm measuring only the current through R3. So down here, only through R3, and it tells me it's at 1.87. So I've got 1.87 measured here. And then finally, I'm measuring the current going into R4. So over here is my R4, and I'm measuring the current here at 1.986 milliamps. So that gives me my four currents of 1.985, 0 0.180, 1 1.870 and 1.986. So if you remember, here's our measured values that we got, um, our voltage total, our R total, our I total, etc right through to our voltages. So those are our measured values that I got from those tables. I've just transferred them into this little spreadsheet. So what do we observe? So we're gonna compare the calculated table with the measured table. We're gonna add the measured voltage drops. And do they equal the applied voltage? We're gonna ask ourselves those questions and add the measured currents and do they equal the applied current? So do all the voltages add up to the applied voltage and do all the currents add up to the total supply current? So how are we gonna do that? So what I've done here is I've taken the blue table is the measured values and the yellowy orange table is the calculated values. So let's just do a little comparison and I'll just um, highlight them as I go with the pen. So our voltages can't really not have them the same, it's pretty obvious. So I've got a correlation with the applied voltages, measured and calculated. Our R total that we measured with our ohm meter came in at uh, 9,970, but we were actually at 10,000. So very, very close. And of course, any error there would be just, you know, maybe a couple of percent and that's just errors in the measurement devices like the multimeter. We look at the current now and again the currents are so close. The current that we calculated and the current that we measured are very very close. So we calculated it would be 1.963 and it came in at 1.988. So again within parts of a percent. So our I1, we measured I1 at 1.988 and it's calculated at 1.963. Again, here, very, very close. So you can see the currents are lining up. Current two, I2 through the second resistor we set it measured at uh, 0.18, but we calculated it at 0.178, and again, we're within less than 1%, so spot on. I3, again, we calculated 1.87 milliamps, and we measured 1.78, so exactly spot on here. Then the current through I4, which should have been also the I total, we measured it at 1.986 and we measured and we uh, calculated it at 1.963. So again, our comparison here, spot on, spot on. We've worked, it's working well. So that's the end of our currents. So that's all our currents dealt with. So all of that part was currents. We're now going to be dealing this side with voltages. So we measured a voltage of 2 volt, 0.2 of a volt across V1. We calculated that it would be 0.9, 1.9, not 0.196. I'll get it right in a moment. And again, 
very, very, very close. So that worked. Voltage across V2, we uh, calculated 17.84 and it measured at 17.88. Again, so close we'd call that spot on. Of course, the voltage across V2 and V3, because these two are in parallel, they're going to be the same. So we uh, calculated a voltage of 17.84 and we got actually measured 17.88 again. Very, very, very close. And finally, the voltage across V4, we calculated it at 1.96 volts and it came in at 2.046. Again, only a less than 1% error here. So again, very, very close. So we've demonstrated quite clearly that we are able to calculate and measure values around series parallel networks and get the results that we anticipate. That the currents do add up. And let's do a, a little addition first. First, the voltages. So do the voltages add up? So if I add up all the voltages around the circuit, that's 0.2, 17.8, and 2.06. Remember, I don't add the two 17s because it's the same. No, I do add the two 17s, I'm sorry. I add the 0.2, the 17.88, another 17.8, and 2.06. And I get 20. Twenty volts, so twenty point one two five, which is so close, it doesn't matter. Then finally, our currents, I two and I three, add up to two milliamps, and the current we measured was one point nine eight. So again, our currents add up nicely. So that ends DC skills number eight is finished where the voltages and currents are in a series parallel network can be demonstrated to add up correctly.